2006 regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is 7.30 p.m. Will the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Backer. Present. Councillor Dill. Present. Councillor Fritz. Here. Councillor Lynch. Present. Councillor McKinney. Present. Councillor Moles. Here. Councillor Swift Kayata. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes of our meeting number 14-2006 held September 11, 2006. May I have a motion? Move to accept. Second. Comments on the minutes? The only item I noticed, and maybe this is something that doesn't even need to be here, but at the end, um, after we exited executive session and returned to public session at 10.08, I wonder if we should add something to the minutes indicating that we adjourned. I think we should. Mm, that's a good idea. Why, do, we, why don't we uh, say we adjourned at 10.09? That's fine. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Brought to the best of my recollection. <laughs> So if, if we could add to the minutes um, our adjournment at 10.09 p.m., please. All those in favor of approval of the minutes as amended? The minutes are approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Is my mic the only one that is this loud? I don't know. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we've had trouble with the sound system not being loud enough in the room, so we're experimenting by having the microphones louder. Well, I think whatever you've done, you've cured the problem we had before. <laughs> uh, reports and correspondence. Um, if anyone has things, if we could first, I'd like to first turn to Councillor Fritz and ask her to introduce an item for us. Great. As the council knows, I uh, serve on Eco Maine's board of directors, formerly Regional Waste Systems, um, and the Recycling Committee. And every year, uh, we have been giving a Recycler of the Year award, um, and this year, uh, we have an award for um, one of the awards for um, Recycler of the Year uh, to some citizens of Cape Elizabeth. And I'd like to introduce Kevin Roach, uh, the general manager of Eco Maine, to present the award. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Carol. Uh, I'm here to, tonight to present the Eco Excellence Award to the Swap Shop Volunteers, which is a group of individuals here in Cape Elizabeth that have been recognized by the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Committee for their le leadership in recycling initiatives. The objective of the Eco Excellence Award is to promote an awareness of successful recycling uh, initiatives um, here in our region, and nominations are reviewed by the Eco Maine Recycling Committee, of which Carol sits on. They are judged on the effectiveness and results of the initiative, community impact, increased awareness, as well as ease of rep replication, and that may be the most important attribute. Tonight, we would like, right, like to recognize the Swap Shop volunteers. They have gone out of their way to promote recycling programs, and their volunteer efforts are very much appreciated. Their work has included keeping the swap shop clean and orderly. Their efforts to promote recycling and reuse in this community, in this community have been recognized by many. And most importantly, they are volunteers. The swap shop volunteers were not nominated for this Eco Excellence Award by the Cape Elizabeth Recycling Committee. Alina Perez is the chair, Russell Pierce, and Louise Sullivan. If you could come up, if you want to say a few words. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, they've made our job easier. Um, we just wanted to thank them for the, the hard work they put in. They've largely been a self-organizing group um, with little supervision from us and really have done a fabulous job with, like you said, keeping it clean, orderly, and having people follow the rules, which is really important right now with a lot of the changes in um, state laws with universal waste going into effect. So we have... Um, yeah, we're going to present them with uh, official Cape Recycles volunteer shirts <laughs> in environmentally friendly green and also pins uh, that identify them as volunteers at the swap shop. Uh, we hope that hopefully by giving them these, it acknowledges their efforts and also will make them more easily identifiable to people that come into the swap shop because I know that when people are policed in the swap shop, often they're very apprehensive about who's telling them what to do and we thought that if we gave them a little bit of an identity, hopefully it'll help them in their jobs. So <laughs> we appreciate their efforts. Yeah, thank you. If I might just name, um, Name the swap shop volunteers. I think some of them are here tonight. Um, Jerry Edgar, and if you'd come up, uh, Jerry Edgar, Kathy Pinkham, Leroy Kimball, Jane Hurst, Gail Rowe, Jerry Davis, Ray Mayot, and Lucinda Pfeiffer. I should mention that so, there are a lot of people that go unnamed that have remained anonymous, so the group is really much larger than those. The, the plaque reads, the 2006 Eco Maine Eco Excellence Award to Cape Elizabeth Swap Shop Volunteers. Thank you very much. And I also might, uh, um, Pat Anderson, who's our new transfer station operator, uh, is here, and I think she probably knows the transfer, or the swap shop volunteers better than anybody. And, um, and I just have to say while she's coming up that uh, Pat Anderson is doing a wonderful job at the transfer station. Um, I, I can see your real commitment to recycling and um, making it more user friendly with lots of signs and you're a tremendously hard worker so um, thank you very thank much. You. Um, I do have to say one thing. Come, come up to the microphone. I think there's an unwritten code amongst the volunteers mm -hmm. that there are never more than two of them in one place at one time and it's they've proven it here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And just as there's a whole invisible group that's been named, as you said, there are even more than that. Yeah, yeah. And um, every day that I work up there, I realize that, well, there's another person doing something. <laughs> I wonder who they are. And, and that people are, are constantly asking me how they can help, you know, what can they do. And, you know, I try to direct them to just sort of some little guidelines on on how to follow in the footsteps of the, you know, the professional volunteers that, you know, that I know have kept this place going for the 10 years it's been in existence. So um, they deserve it. They work hard for it. And uh, keep up the good work, you guys. Just, just saying one, one more thing. I think one of the uh, you know, the transfer station is always the number one most popular um, public service that we give people in this town. People love the transfer station and I think, you know, it's, it's user friendly, it's open regularly, it's a great view going to the transfer station, but I really think what people are anticipating is finding a treasure at the swap shop. <laughs> and, and that's, um, the orderliness of it is due a lot to the transfer station volunteers. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to just personally add my thanks to <laughs> I'd like to just add my thanks to all of you for what you've done for the transfer station for the recycling center. Um, I mean it's it, my mother was here visiting a month or so ago. she lives in the midwest, and i my wife while she was here said, oh, I'm going to the dump, I'll be back in a little bit. My mother said, you're doing what? She said, I'm going to the dump. And my, my mother didn't quite understand that concept, and we explained to her what we had here, and she insisted on 
going so she could see it. And I took her, I ran into Councilor Moles in the swap shop while I was there, giving my mother a tour. And I ended up walking out with a very cool little M&M dispenser that still had some M&Ms in it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but, bring anything home on fear of what my wife would do to me, so. <laughs> but you do a fabulous job there. Um, thank you for all you do. And Kevin, thank you very much for coming this evening. We appreciate it. And thanks for the great job you're doing. And there was yet one more article in the Sunday paper about the wonders of the swap shop last Sunday. So. Um, other items on reports and correspondence, Councilor Dill. Yes, I would just like to thank um, all citizens who have communicated to the Road Safety Committee. We've had approximately 30 emails uh, with some great suggestions. And the public forum that was held on September 28th was lively and helpful and very productive. And our next meeting is October 16th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Others? Councilor McKinney? I just wanted to mention um, something that I was involved with a week or two ago in your absence. Excuse me, Councilor McKinney. Sure. Um, could we have quiet in the chambers, please? Uh, we're still we're in the midst of business. Thank you. Councilor McKinney, sorry. I was speaking with someone today, and they were uh, talking about the, the, their perceived need for more regionalization, and they think that maybe Tabor is a good idea because it will force regionalization. And it occurred to me that a lot of people are not aware of the things that we're doing on a regional basis that are really saving money, and the communities are working together. And I thought it would be important to uh, perhaps point out one of those I sat in, in your absence, uh, Chairman Backer, for a, a news conference, conference the other day on the Metro Coalition. And it, that's a group of six communities in Greater Portland who have formed a coalition to work together to um, find ways of cost savings, to work in terms of buying equipment and what have you. And I just thought may, maybe you'd like to explain a little bit so that people understand what that's all about. And, I think it's important that un people understand that uh, we are making great strides and great efforts on a regional basis, but it's more in terms of regional collaboration to work together so that we can um, get things done, but we still retain our independence as uh, communities. So perhaps, I don't know if you want to mention anything, but uh, like the... Uh, well, I think you've just done a good job. I don't know if there's anything that I need to add to it. It is. It's a, it currently consists of six communities. Other communities are welcome to join in at any time. It's a voluntary association um, that Cape Elizabeth is participating in, the purpose of which is for the communities to find ways that they can voluntarily um, increase efficiencies um, or decrease, decrease costs by working together. And um, I have no doubt that good things will come from it. So thank you for raising that. You're welcome. Other items? Councilor Fritz. Yeah, I just wanted to rem uh, remind people that this Saturday from 9 to 1 is um, the Household E-Waste uh, Collection Day. Um, and the kinds of things, this is not hazardous waste, it's uh, mercury-related items. Um, so the kinds of things that you should bring are fluorescent light bulbs, mercury and mercury thermometers, thermostats, electronics, old stereo equipment, televisions, computer equipment, which includes CPUs, the monitors, printers, keyboards, and peripherals. Um, there will be a regular household hazardous waste collection in, in the spring. Um, there is, and it's only household generated, um, items, no business, no commercial, um, and we will be limited to five items per household. Um, so um, get those monitors and computers that are unused out of, out of your basement. <laughs> and where do they bring them? To the collection center, thank you. Oh, the public works group. Okay, you're right, yes. So the public works, not the transfer station. Same, same, right next door. Same entrance, right. Great. Thank you. Um, town manager's report. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of things. First, I wanted to recognize and thank the Cape Elizabeth Water Extrication Team, the wet team. Uh, over the last month, I think they've been busier than uh, any month in their history. 
And you know, while you know, a few of the you know, when the the lobsterman uh, passed away, unfortunately, that that got a lot of publicity as you would expect it to. But but I think that same day, a, a, an issue or an event that didn't get as much attention was that there was a, a young man from Cape Elizabeth who was out on uh, lobstering and actually had to move from lobster buoy to lobster buoy out in the water for about 45 minutes waiting to be saved. And it was only when the wet team boat went out and plucked him off the lobster buoy that, that he survived. And uh, I think it really showed the benefit of the wet team. Uh, and you know that was just one day. I think you know we were all aware that they were out there this week as well, uh, helping to search. Uh, you know, with still the mystery of, of that particular situation. But anyway, I want to recognize them and thank them for all of their work, as well as the members of the fire department and the rescue who have worked with them uh, on all those different incidents. Uh, secondly, there's been a couple of questions on the status of the traffic light at the high school entrance, and. I thought I'd briefly update the council, although some of it has been well reported in the newspaper. Uh, the planning board, as we all know, required as part of their approval for the high school project for there to be a traffic light at the high school entrance. Uh, the hope was that the cost of that would be shared uh, by the town, by a private sector development at the intersection of the high school and by uh, some monies that were left over from the school project, and more particularly monies that, that came about as a result of the investment of the bond proceeds during the construction period, the so-called arbitrage earnings. Um, there was a very challenging bidding environment during the construction season this year. The folks that hoped to develop something called the Cape, Commercial, Cape Commerce Center, AKA Dunkin' Donuts, uh, which involved a lot more than Dunkin' Donuts, had met with the main Department of Transportation, and they were requiring, are requiring, a fairly lengthy uh, left turn lane in the area. The understanding that we had, what we had discussed with the folks that were going to develop the Cape Commerce Center, was that the, the developer would pay for all of the infrastructure improvements to the intersection, with the exception of the traffic light itself. Uh, they, even before going to the planning board for approval, they solicited bids apparently, and the lowest bid was over $200,000 for the left turn lane. The original estimate had been down in the range of 80 to 100,000. So they, they backed off for a while. They, not too sure what they want to do, they decided to invest, you know, in, go to other projects that, you know, because of the cost of this particular one as it was turning out, uh, had more of a rate of return. That was a notice I got back in August, uh, early August, and really haven't heard anything from them since. And I would assume, you know, the bidding environment may be changing a little bit, but who knows. Uh, the requirement remains. Uh, it, it's my intent to see the way things settle out over the next couple of months with uh, issues on the ballot, with uh, some of the other projects we're doing, the Spurwick Avenue one, although that probably is going to be a spring bid, uh, but basically to see what happens in November. And then to come back to the council maybe for an authorization to go out to bid uh, in the spring. To my knowledge, you know, we, we, we haven't, we haven't cl totally closed out the school project and you know, I understand that requirement's there and we need to follow it. And you know, absent going back to the planning board to try to get that removed, that's still the operative policy and I'd be happy to answer any question that anyone might have on that. Councilor Lynch. I, I have one question, um, and it's, it's a concern that I've already raised with the manager, but I wanted to raise it for the rest of the council. I have a concern that um, if the town were to go forward with the project, complete it by borrowing or taxes, whatever, um, and then a private developer came in, right now we don't have any way to reach back, if you will for those expenses. So I think um, it would be an order for us to consider an ordinance, um, and I'm not quite sure of the mechanism, but I know it's possible. I've read or heard about other towns doing it, where um, we, we, we would have some kind of special assessment district, and we could reach back so that if, for instance, um, Dunkin' Donuts or any other place came in after the town, 
had funded significant traffic improvements, we could reach back and get a share of the cost of those improvements because it will be benefiting the real estate on that corner. So I'd like to um, at least raise that as an issue. Um, Mike, if you have any comments um, or, or, or sense of how that might be accomplished, but I think we really ought to be thinking about that and not get stuck, if you will, with full costs. Other questions for the manager? Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Do you want an update on the submeter thing, too? Please. Good. I, the, is, quite a few citizens got notices if they had, well, all the citizens who have submeters got notices for the Portland Water District that the Portland Water District is going through a program of retrofitting their submeters. It's, uh, I believe it's a $9 million program uh, district wide uh, to, to, to change out to their new metering system. Uh, one of the issues the Portland Water District has is that the submeters belong to the individuals and not to the district themselves, and how do those become compatible? Uh, they're looking at doing retrofits for them, but it's expensive. They, they sent out a letter saying that, in essence, that they hinted that rates would be going up $2. Uh, the council had had some discussion about that earlier. Uh, you would ask me to look into it. I've had several discussions with the water district. Uh, and I, I actually I spoke uh, to David Kane yesterday, their executive, I forget what his title is, the, uh, the guy who's in charge of that section of the water district. And I said, how many complaints you got? And the answer was over 600. Uh, so while, yeah, initially, you know, they were telling us that there weren't that many complaints, because district-wide there have been over 600. But they plan to go full speed ahead. Uh, they have a little bit of difficulty understanding why we're not willing to sign on to the $2 because most of the other communities apparently are. Uh, I indicated we're just not willing to. Uh, in, you know, they were looking at it for uniformity. I said, it doesn't make any sense. The, the rate's not uniform anyway. Uh, but it, it does appear, you know, there's the philosophical issue that the council discussed a couple of months ago, who pays, you know, for the services. Is it all of the rate payers or, or for those the submeter? It really comes down to it's, uh, the water district says about a dollar and a quarter for the submeter itself and about 75 cents of its customer service. But we're already paying for the customer service because that, so that's not an additional cost. So that's, you know, no need to recover that. So it appears that the, the cost is between a dollar and a dollar and a quarter. Uh, if you, as you looked at the financial statements when you met with the auditors last night, You've, you've seen that we've, we've actually had good results with the sewer fund of late. So, but you know, but, but the, you get back to the philosophical of recovering the cost. So, it, it will likely be my recommendation, and you know, I'd like to have public comment on it at the, at the next meeting if possible, to increase the sewer rate one dollar, even for those with submeter accounts. So that will be an agenda item on next month's council meeting. Uh, which is the November meeting to be prior to the certification of any citizen vote that may be approved, which is the reason for bringing it up at that point. I'd be happy to answer any questions on that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mike. Councillor swift -Kayetta. So that's a dollar a month, right, Mike? A dollar a month, $12 a year. Okay, thank you. Councillor Moles? Do we need to add that our agenda tonight to set to a public hearing that discussion for next month so the public will show up or just simply by saying what you just said you think that'll be sufficient or it's up to the council if you want to have it as a formal public hearing or, or opportunity for public comment and a vote that's totally up to the council just trying to give lots of advance notice of it by the way we've had about six or, I've had six or seven calls and or visits on the issue, which, which is a lot on an issue here in Cape Elizabeth. Mr. Chairman, do we, to, to the manager, do we have um, a list of who in Cape Elizabeth has the submeters? We don't have a list, but we, we could get one. Well, I'm just thinking in terms of notifying, I'm sensitive to what Council Moles said about 
if we're, you know, whether we're setting up formal public hearing or just receiving public input or whatever, but the people who are likely to be most interested in this are the people who have submeters. So I didn't know how many of them there were. Um, About 700. Okay. Council Moles. Perhaps the press that are present will just put it in their report this week and spread the word for us. Okay, well, we'll at least get it on the agenda for next month. We will. Okay. And on the website, I would assume. On the website. Yeah, I, the, the citizens need to sign off to the water district between before next uh, month. And what I've said, you know, there was a, I think the district gave a deadline. What I've suggested to all of them is, is that it won't be two, it'll probably be one, but ultimately it's up to the council and they should make the decision assuming it'll be one. Well, what's the effect of a citizen with a submeter not signing off by next month? Uh, they would discontinue reading the submeter. They would no longer have the submeter proposal. The, the other problem with it is, is that this particular year, because of all the rain, folks didn't use their submeters that much. You know, the, my own was, it showed a benefit of $4, you know, which so I would have lost under the water disc proposal uh, uh, $20 this year on it. No. And if it's a matter of the, that the water district won't read the submeters until this is resolved in some fashion, people aren't using their submeters this time of year anyway. That's correct. And, and the council previously agreed to participate in the program. The, the, the issue that was left uh, outstanding is how it would be paid for. And remember, there was, there's been some give and take on that over the last few months. And I, I think it's been a good strategy for us to see how it plays out playing out. Well, thank you for monitoring that. Anything else? Um, <laughs> Councillor, I mean, <laughs> Town Manager McGovern. No. Well, we did get a plaque, another one, uh, for the best website in the state from the, uh, at a conference last week. Uh, uh, Wendy Derzewick, again, uh, is deserving of this, and uh, we've talked about the website. It's uh, nice to see the state recognizing it. it. It is indeed. Thank you. Citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone here who would like to discuss any item that is not on this evening's agenda? Seeing no one, um, our first agenda item that was tabled from our September 11, 2006 meeting is item number 143-2006 proposed amendments to traffic regulations. May I have a motion to remove that from the table? So moved. Second. Motion, Councillor swift Kayata. Second, Councillor Fritz. Just briefly, I, Carol might want to comment from the perspective of the ordinance. May the, the language that's in your draft agenda was the exact language that was tabled from last month. Mm -hmm. uh, the proposal now would be to have a public hearing on Monday, November 12th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, the Ordinance Committee reviewed um, these uh, proposed amendments and um, recommends that this be set to, the, to a public hearing on November 12th. Um, if I might just say, excuse we, me. We haven't board. voted no, on the motion yet I was just to say, remove it from the table. First. Um, we haven't voted yet on the motion to remove it from the table. If we could do that first. Uh, first, is there discussion on the motion? to remove it from the table. All those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed, and the item is now on the table. Councilor Fritz. Okay, I um, just wanted to briefly mention the elements of these amendments. Um, that there's a penalty for parking improperly on roads, which is considered a misdemeanor that was already in the ordinance. This adds parking improperly at Plaisted Park, Fort Williams, and the school uh, will be infractions as they're proposed. Um, and that fine would be set by the town council. Um, it also proposes that Plaisted Park parking area would be used only for activities at Plaisted Park. Um, the town council could set um, that area to be used for special events at Plaisted Park, things going on at Fort Williams. Um, let's see. 
it also would allow tickets to be given to be issued by town employees if they're authorized by the chief of police um, and again an amount set by the town council for parking uh, infractions on the school grounds and uh, at Fort Williams Park and then it also sets a one-way traffic area at the high school uh, from in front of the front door of the Cape Elizabeth High School to the U-turn northerly of the track and back to the high school access road. Carol, did you make a motion? Was, oh. Not yet. We don't have a motion yet to set it for so, public hearing. I'll move that we set the traffic regulation proposed amendments to a public hearing for November 12th. Second. Motion, Councilor Fritz. Second, Councilor Lynch. Discussion on the motion, Councilor swift Kayata. It's not discussion, but on page, it's the page marked 13-4. I think we're missing a, just a little bit of a heading. It says all the other section headings say section SEC period and then the number. But this one only says 13-2-3. Mm -hmm. So I think it just needs SEC period at the beginning of that line. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Paul's Very laughing at me. <laughs> um, other discussion on the proposal to set this for public hearing, Councilor Moles. Uh, not, not to pre-discuss it, but Next month when we discuss this, will the outcome of the election, meaning when we vote on the parking fees or not, have some impact on what we do with the Playstead Park issue? We may not need any additional parking enforcement at Playstead Park if there's no issue at Fort Williams. Does that have an effect at all? No. If I might, Mr. Jim. That, that provision relates to Sometimes we, have, we currently have parking fees for approved event at, events at Fort Williams, and sometimes people try to get around those fees by parking in Playstead instead. And this would allow someone you know, to collect fees at Playstead as well, regardless of the, uh, it's only for special events, it's not okay. the, the normal course of things. Thank you for that clarification. And I assume if people were parking on the lawn where they're not supposed to be parking at Fort Williams, they could get a ticket. Please, the chief of police will whip him into shape. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor of the motion to schedule the, to set this for public hearing? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. Our next agenda item is number 147-2006, which is the approval of a warrant for the pay display question as a follow-up from our September 11, 2006 meeting. Would someone like I to? I would move approval of the warrant for the pay display question. Second. Motion, Councillor Lynch. Second, Councillor Dill. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion is approved. Six in favor, one opposed. Councillor Fritz. Next agenda item 148-2006, draft resolution endorsing Metro Regional Coalition. Mike, would you like to introduce this briefly? I'd be happy to. Uh, as as Councillor McKenney mentioned earlier, he participated in a press conference on this, and uh, the chairman has participated in some meetings, as is the chief of police, the fire chief, and myself. Uh, the neighboring communities of uh, Portland, South Portland, Westbrook, Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, and Scarborough have been meeting regularly to look at ways that we might better cooperate. And so it's been a good process. And this uh, resolution encourages those activities to continue, as well as has some, it manages to go on for two pages uh, with, uh, with language that lays out uh, the importance of uh, regionalism, the importance of working together the potential for savings and, and particularly the potential for better services as well. Thank you. We have a motion. I, I move that we 
endorse this resolution for the Metro Regional Coalition. Second. Motion, Councilor McKinney. Second, Councilor Swift Kayata. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I just, I just had a little bit of comment because I, I do believe in regionalization and I think there's a lot of good we can, um, can come by exploring with our neighboring communities. But I just hope that none of the things that are looked into would require duplicated, you know, duplicative staff. Uh, in other words, more staff than we currently have on our own and, and that we would not enlarge county government. Agreed. Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Next, item number 150-2006, draft. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I skipped one. 149. 149-2006, uh, thank you. Report from the Appointments Committee. And the Chair of the Appointment, Appointments Committee is Councilor Lynch. Thank you. Um, Councilor Swift, Kayata, and um, Councilor Moles and I met with a number of applicants for uh, Vacancies, uh, one vacancy on the planning board and one on the zoning board of appeals. We interviewed uh, seven or eight people, really all great candidates, um, fine people, and I want to thank everyone who applied. Um, we are nominating Jim Hubner for the planning board, that's James H. Hubner, and Mal Malcolm Weatherby for the zoning board of appeals. They are both filling unexpired terms, so these are for uh, two-year terms to expire 12-31-2008. Before we vote on it, I just want to um, encourage everyone who applied to reapply again. We will have a number of vacancies coming up for town boards and commissions, and we will be doing interviews in November and December. So um, again, the quality of the candidates was extraordinarily high. I think one of the um, highlights of serving on the Appointments Committee is to meet so many people who are dedicated um, and willing to give their time to the town. So I want to thank them and make these two nominations. Second. Motion, Councilor Lynch, second. Councilor Moles. Discussion on the motion? One little piece of discussion. Again, as Councilor Lynch said, tremendous group of people that showed up to volunteer their time and effort for these different boards as always. Um, for those people that are sitting at home or watching this saying, hey, I, I went down and I applied for this position, as we go to fill our annual positions in another month, we will, we will not necessarily need to re-interview people that we just interviewed. We had this discussion that we would, we took copious notes while we interviewed these people and some of those people we will be considering automatically for those positions as they open up as they do each January. So for those people that didn't get picked, uh, you should contact us, tell us you still intend to be part of uh, our selection, uh, but they don't have to come in and re-interview most likely. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Um, I would like to thank Councilors Fritz, Moles, and Swift Kayata for all the work they've done on the Appointments Lynch. Committee this year. Lynch. Didn't I say Lynch? No, you said, no, you said Fritz. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Lynch, okay. Moles, Carol. and Swift Kayata. Carol sorry, back. Carol. <laughs> but I, no, I know the three of you have done a lot of work on the Appointments Committee this year, so thank you very much. And, Carol um, has done a lot over many years. And we will welcome Mr. Hubner and Mr. Weatherby. Next, on to 150-2006, draft resolution regarding the National Incident, Incident Management System. Michael. Uh, thank you, David. As the material indicates, the, if we're to receive any grants uh, from the Department of Homeland Security, it's necessary to adopt this resolution. You might note that it, was, it referred to an attached implementation plan. That's in the hundreds of pages 
uh, as typically anything would be from the federal government, and I, I took the liberty of not copying all of it for you, uh, but it is available if you would like to see it. Uh, so I'd encourage you to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Motion, Councillor Moll. Second, Councillor McKinney. Is there a discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Next, item number 151-2006, request from ISIS Development LLC to extend provisions of the shared parking agreement between the town hall lot and the lot next to town hall. Michael. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ISIS Development is the owner of the property uh, behind the council uh, wall in back of us. Uh, and when the per land was purchased, there was an arrangement for a shared parking agreement, and it required that the site work uh, be substantially complete by December 31, 2006, or the shared parking agreement would expire. Uh, anyone who's uh, driven by the town hall and the lot next door uh, would note that uh, it's very doubtful that the site work will be substantially complete by December 31. Uh, the owner of the property has asked for an extension uh, to August 31, 2007. They have publicly offered a non-refundable $5,000 payment in consideration of the extension. I would suggest that we permit anyone who wishes to speak on this to speak on it, but that the, the because this is the, in essence the sale of a property right, that it uh, could be discussed in executive session and the council may want to consider uh, giving me direction uh, or, or adopting uh, an amount uh, following executive session in conformance with MRSA section 405 paragraph 6C. But you might want to have some uh, public comment first. You may, want, you may want to discuss it publicly, but you do have the right to go into executive session under that paragraph. Uh, Mr. Woods is here. Mr. Woods, did you want to address the council on this? Councilor Fritz. There's um, disagreement on the shared parking, but I'm wondering, I think there was an extension of the planning board approval that was already granted. When does the next extension expire? Um, the, the planning board approval required uh, construction to begin by a, about a week ago. And a week ago? I believe it was an extension. And there was very minor construction occurred. I haven't seen it. I haven't noticed it. There's a hole over there. And a foundation was It's been more. Well, I would move that we would go into executive session. We um, are um, going into executive session um, on the next item as well. So um, I don't know if you want to take citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda um, or what order, but I would suggest we go into executive session under Section 405.6C to discuss the property issue and 6D to discuss the police contract. And I don't know whether to make that a motion because I don't know whether you want to do the citizens' items. I don't think I see any citizens. Well, seeing no here. citizens here. Except for Mr. Rowe, he's here. <laughs> Who? Uh, Mr. Wood. <laughs> he's here. We just didn't think he Mr. wanted to speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, again, if, if Mr. Woods would like to speak to this before we go into executive session, um, you're certainly welcome to do so. And Mr. Chairman, the intent would be that we would take a vote upon coming out of the executive session on this item. That's right. Well, would we take a vote or would we simply in executive session be giving the town manager some direction? direction? I would expect to be a vote. But,
this is the project going in next door. Um, what I'm asking the council to do is extend the parking agreement by way of review historically. The reason the parking agreement was entered into with the town was to enable the project at the scale to meet what the town's goal, were, town's goal was for mixed-use development. That's to say, instead of a single-use development, maybe a single-story building or something like that, it would incorporate what planning department, town planner, and I think generally what the consensus is, a superior way of amplifying the property and the best use of the property, meaning residential, commercial, and retail on the bottom. That particular configuration and the intensity of that use under the ordinance, the planning ordinance, required a relatively large amount of parking, more than what this small lot would, in fact, carry. So the parking agreement was entered into for overflow parking. In reality, it's doubtful whether or not that parking will be used on any type of an intensive basis, primarily because the building itself is, um, I think there's close to 40 parking spaces as it is on the lot itself. And it would only be during mm, perhaps very intensive parts of the day, but at night the building goes dark except for the residential part of it. So the, the key thing to understand in terms of parking agreement is that you can put a much more modest single story building here with very little, um, there's plenty of parking for that. But for the town to achieve the goal that I would like to see for this building and also the goal I think the town expressed is to, by ordinance, extend the parking agreement and the additional spaces that were allocated on this side. Um, it has been a very challenging, um, you may ask what is the, the nature of the delay, um, quite a bit of money has been expended well into the six figures since I purchased that lot, um, well over, um, close to that during this year itself. There's been a diligent effort to continue development forward. Environmental issues still exist on that lot. As you remember, it was the Irving Station. Um, but they're solvable. And the other thing that I'm encountering is that to get the commercial tenant mix the way that I feel comfortable with, in other words, putting this building up, it's taking a little more time to get the right mix. I see a financial institution there. I see coffee. I see restaurant. But not just any of those things. These discussions are are lengthy and they're continuing. Mm. I'm very optimistic about them. I wouldn't be spending, like I say, well over six figures since purchasing the property itself. Efforts have been diligent, but I anticipate the construction environment to be much different, as I think the town does too, and the town recognized earlier, the competitive building, uh, bidding environment and material um, cost environment during this particular construction cycle this year. So that is, um, that is part of it, at least. Questions? Councilor Fritz. Councilor Fritz. Um, so the main thing that's causing your delay is the DEP. Um, I wouldn't say that. It's not the main thing. I'd say the main thing is, for as wonderful as this town is on a residential basis, all of us recognize, and you see, you see the citizens coming before you, and I share that view too. On a commercial basis, it is not as um, it's, it's much more delicate in terms of attracting any type of substantial commercial development here. Okay, and by, by that I mean tenants and um, the type of nature that I think would best work in this town. If you're picky, it is at least. Um, and that is really one of the real things that's pushing. Um, their decision cycles are sometimes 18 months. Sometimes you miss, in terms of a, a, of a location opening here, they may be 18 months out for allocating certain units for this state, for this region in southern Maine. Financial institution that I'm working with right now, they're doing a complete reorganization of their branch network, and they are optimistic about doing this. And, but these things, planning cycles, they just replace that by pre vice president with another vice president. So this planning cycles go forward. Um, I will say that it is actually, from a financial standpoint, the irony of this is, that a smaller structure, a single story structure, is probably, it'll be much more economical for me, and it'll be a much more easier, um, easier development challenge to meet. I don't think the end result in terms of what the town, what I would like to see for the town center district, and what I think is potential for the town center district, working off of this project to completion, I don't think that's the best way of doing it. By terminating the parking agreement, in other words, the town council can elect to, doesn't automatically, they can elect to terminate it, what that would do is scale back this development to a, to a much more modest um, 
much more modest structure would not incorporate the features that I think are the most desirable. Something would go in there. There would be a commercial building there. There's no question about it. It's just a matter of making, getting the, um, the formula for the parking spaces. Other questions? <clears throat> but then you would have to go through planning board approval all Correct. over again. Correct. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because, I mean, right. that's running out, you know, run out. No, site plan's been extended. My building permit is, in fact, I've spent, in the last six months, I've spent close to $30,000 with the town in building in sewer permits. My sewer permit was, I think, over close to $20,000. And my building permit was um, um, well over $8,000. So, in other words, money's being spent. Development keeps pushing forward. It's not a matter of nothing's been just sitting there collecting dust. Quite a bit of, quite a bit of effort and quite a bit of money has been expended with the, with the goal of getting this building out of the ground and getting it out of the ground the right way. That's what then. Two years, three years. A big part. Two or three years. I forget what the when we first got approval. Well, approval I think was two years ago. But if you recall, then too there was there was an unexpected easement issue with the town in terms of that back easement that was there, and that required um, close to fourteen thousand dollars of legal fees on my part to straighten out. Arguably, that was not present at first glance. But it worked out fine. It worked out very nicely. And, it, and, and, and once again, it does move forward. If there are no other comments, um, did we have a motion to go into executive session? My only comment, just in the um, full disclosure, I am one of the owners of the condominiums adjacent to the project that was the subject of the easement. I wasn't an owner at the time, at the time right. but Subsequ I am now. So Subsequent so. title. Did, did we have a motion to well, go into executive session? I would session? move to go into executive session under 1 MRSA section 405 subsection 6C for the purpose of discussing extension of the parking agreement. And I would further move that we go into executive session under subparagraph 6D for the purpose of hearing um, a report on the police negotiations. Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? We will go into executive session. Um, when we come out of executive session, we will not go back on the air, but we will be taking a public vote on Agenda item number 151-2006 on the request from ISIS, ISIS Development, LLC. So we are executive session. in executive session. Just one thing, David. I'm not sure if Monday, November if the 12th is the 13th for that public hearing, but the minutes will reflect the Monday night. I notice here it says the 13th, but I looked at the calendar. Oh, the thank you. It's the 13th. It's the 13th. So the minutes will reflect the 13th. Oh, yeah.